Hello, everyone. Welcome back. This is the Course in Miracles 365, Awakening to Love, and I'm Reverend Tomas. It's a pleasure to have you here. Thank you all for joining me, and thank you for all of your recent comments and subscriptions. It's a pleasure, pleasure to have you here. And if you're joining me and you're not a subscriber to this channel, this little red arrow right here is the subscription button. What I offer is, well, A Course in Miracles. I share this course and some, I hope, funny stories from my own experience with you. I'm laughing because our own experience well, painful at times, right? It is painful at times, should have some humor to it. It's, it's a fun and integral part of the path to be able to laugh, to be able to laugh at our own folly, <laughs> at the ways that we've gotten in our way where we've stated that we wanted one thing but habitually did something else that led to a completely different result the way that we've spun on the virtual hamster wheel again and again and again and again and again and again and again, and again wanting a different result but doing the same things out of habit the same behaviors the same stuff thinking the same stuff and getting the same old suffering as a result. Well, enter the miracle, enter this course. And if you are a practitioner of another spiritual tradition, enter your tradition, spirituality in general. Yeah. We're talking about here the last few paragraphs of chapter one, section one of the text, Principles of Miracles. And we want to talk about time today and controlling time cool very cool when you begin to practice it and understand how it works it's even cooler still so why don't we start with a general question what's time i mean have you ever wondered that what is time it seems to exist in this world it seems to dominate <laughs> in this world the image that you see before you on your screen and i promise you it is nothing more than a projected image on your screen does not look the way it would have looked had there been YouTube in the 1970s and 1980s, <laughs> where I was playing with sticks and throwing dirt clods at my friends, and never did I ever imagine that we'd be able to make our own TV and people all over the world would be able to watch it right from the comfort of their own home or wherever they happen to be on their little portable computer that doubles as a phone. I know, right? Never did I imagine that. The image that you see on your screen now has gray hair. A large portion of it has in fact fallen out and gone away. <laughs> which is not how we looked back then, which seems to give us evidence of what we call the passage of time. Everything seems to be proceeding in what we've dubbed a linear fashion from birth to death, what we call death. In other words, the crapping out of this device, which happens in this world, Time seems to be relentless. As we say, it waits for no one. Well, of course it doesn't wait for anyone. It's nothing. 
and there's no one for it to wait for after all. Time is this great mystery. And when we think about it, we can't place it, can we? We can say that we're measuring it, but if you think about it, we made up the measurements. Whether we measure it with a digital clock or whether it's measured in a more traditional method, we made up the measurements. And something very interesting here on time is that I read, I remember reading in the 1980s, an article in, I believe it was National Geographic, one of those types of magazines, an article called The Enigma of Time. And I thought, oh, well, now, isn't that interesting? Enigma. So if we're calling something an enigma, it's quite clear that it's not fully understood. And upon further investigation, it's quite clear that it's not even partially understood. And should one dare to investigate further, which I invite you to do, it becomes clear that we don't understand a single thing about it it becomes clear that it's an idea. It's an idea, isn't it? We made it up. Same with space, which appears real in this world. That's not real either, is it? We made it up. If we have to label something as poorly understood or an enigma, it's a pretty clear indication that we made it up. So as we've seen here, having made something up, we can unmake it. We made it. We can unmake it. We can withdraw our belief in its reality. How do we do that? the miracle, spiritual practice. Now, again, this applies whether you are a student of A Course in Miracles or not. It is your spiritual practice, whatever that looks like. A miracle is a temporary device. It's a temporary communication device, isn't it? It's temporary because there is in reality, in truth, nothing to forgive. Why? Because we've never left our source. Ideas leave not their source. We've never left our home in God as one with God. This is what we're returning our awareness to. And the device by which we do that is the miracle. Here in the thought system of A Course in Miracles, it's forgiveness. It's our true forgiveness. It's our practice of forgiveness that bit by bit returns us to where we've always been and never left. So why do we use the word returns us? Well, we're not really going anywhere, but we use very helpful analogies and words here on the spiritual path. We call it a path as though we're walking some place, right? We call it a journey, which is, is kind of sexier in some ways, isn't it? because we're going off for an adventure, right? We're going someplace. So whether you use it pa a path, journey, your walk, which is apt as well, right? We're simply removing barriers that we ourselves have placed. We're removing the blocks to our awareness of truth. We're removing the blocks to our awareness of love's presence, which is truth. God. The miracle is a temporary device by which we clear the way. When there is nothing left to forgive, in other words, when we have completed our forgiveness lessons, we're restored, so to speak. Our original 
form of communication with God is who we are. It's beyond words. It's beyond all concepts. And on the path, we all eventually reach a point where there's nothing left to forgive. We reach a point where we have forgiven everything in the world, everyone, ourselves. There are no more painful lessons for us to learn. Now, how much time will that take? That's in your control, I know. Yeah, it may not feel like it in the moment, is it? But it is in your control. Miracles, as we're told here, are a means, a device, by which we can control time. You can hasten your own awakening through making the present moment choice to forgive, through making the present moment choice for God instead of the ego, for making the present moment choice for love instead of fear, by making the present moment choice for life instead of death. That is in your control. How does this actually work? Well, understand and remember that we forgive under the direction of our inner teacher, under the direction of the Holy Spirit. We allow our inner teacher to guide us. So what does our forgiveness outwardly look like on a given day? Well, in a given circumstance, it can look different than the next circumstance. We do it under the guidance of our inner teacher. And what's going on, let's recall, our part is very small. It's forgiving the image that appears on our screen in what appears to be the world outside. Forgiving a politician, forgiving yourself, forgiving the dog, forgiving your neighbor, forgiving space, time, the ego. Yeah. Try that one. It's a good one. It's an illusion. It appears so real, doesn't it? We forgive what appears to be out there. Our inner teacher, the Holy Spirit, does the deep level unconscious healing. This does end up meaning, should you continue to practice, that there will be certain lessons that are unnecessary. You're, in truth, collapsing time. There is no time anyway, but here where we think it's real, we're invited to adopt a different thought system that says it is not, and that it can be controlled and, well, shortened. The Course tells us in several places that should we really wholeheartedly choose to awaken right now, that we could do just that. But for almost all of us, there is unconscious guilt that needs to be healed and removed before we can do that. This is what we call the spiritual path. This is the part that your inner teacher plays, is going to work on the unconscious, and it's unconscious. We don't know about it. We don't know what may have happened to 
what situation may have gone on for us to begin to harbor that guilt, except we do. There's only one error. That's the error where we thought that we separated from God. That's not possible. It's not possible. Ideas leave not their source. That is a sentence from the Course that almost always comes out of my mouth, doesn't it? Ideas leave not their source. This is a really interesting practical point because when you're having, not if, but when you're having one of these days where it feels like you're not making any progress, where it feels like nothing is working, or when you entertain doubts about the truth of all this, about the veracity of all this, where you think this is a crock of shit, and there may be those days where you legitimately think, what am I actually doing here? Can this possibly be? This seems so outlandish to the ego. Of course it does. The ego's afraid. And the ego's not going to rush to accept the central teaching that this course aims to teach. There is no world. If we've never left our source, of course there's no world. This is a very helpful idea. So I invite you, if you're having one of those days of doubt and frustration, ideas leave not their source. Have that one in your front pocket, not back pocket, but right here at the ready. This is why it's repeated in several different ways in the course, and it's why I'm directed to repeat it again and again. It is very, very handy for those moments of doubt when you think this can't be how controlling time, what? There is no world, huh? Sure feels real. Again, we're adopting a different thought system here. And understanding the teachings intellectually is great. It's important to become familiar with a thought system, of course, but it is essential that you practice it. That's how this course is learned, is in our applying it, practical application. So it doesn't matter who you watch on YouTube. You could see this image, you could see another image on YouTube, and if there's no practical application on your part, then there's no progress on your part, I know. The world is full of people, and you may, in fact, count yourself among them, that collect lots of knowledge. Look, I've collected a lot of knowledge. I have an advanced degree. I have one of those big fancy doctorate degrees and all that stuff. And does that make me special? Hell no. <laughs> no, I'm not at all. It just means that I was heavily invested in the values of the world when I was a young man. And I was. Well, I have one of those. That's why Helen Shookman had him, William Tedford. Same. Right? That's why they had one. Heavily invested in the values of the world. It doesn't make me special. So you could watch this image on a screen. You could watch a different image on a screen and resonate with what they're saying. But if you don't put it into practice, there's no progress. Because you don't have the experience of the teaching. That's where the action is in spirituality, is in the experience of it. So it's in forgiving images on your screen. That's where the action is. It's forgiving with the attitude that this course 
teaches that this is a dream. Your brother did nothing to you. Forgive yourself for dreaming it and trust in the strength of your inner teacher. Words can be different every time. Do it under the guidance of your inner teacher, under your inner teacher's direction. Every time will look different. What is different? The image on the screen. What's the same? The content. Every time. So when you're having one of those days of doubt, I invite you to keep in mind ideas leave not their source. We've never left our source. And if you wish to see that S as a capital, very good. We've never left our source. All right. So as always, it's my pleasure to share these teachings with you. And I'm so grateful that you've chosen to join me here. There's a lot of content on YouTube, isn't there? And some of it's quite interesting, isn't it? It's fascinating and good. And some of it's a lot of shiny objects. The point is, you could be watching anything right now, but here you are dedicated and committed to your spiritual path, to your walk and your practice. That is what I thank you for above all else. Your own commitment. That's the best gift you can give to anyone, to, to everyone, <laughs> really. So feel welcome to subscribe if you haven't the buttons right here the little red arrow and also please feel welcome to reach out to me here on this channel with comments and questions i'm happy to serve as a guide and thank you all as always for joining me have a beautiful day